Hello traders and welcome to a new video uh, that hopefully will help you guys out with um, some strategy. First thing I want to say, uh, in the past week and in the past month, it has been very hard uh, in the crypto community. As many of you probably know, uh, Terra, the crypto company just about collapsed and uh, Luna and UST completely fell as well. Um, and, and ANC did too, the, the ticker that we're looking at right now. Luckily, I was not in Luna. I was not in UST. I didn't do any staking um, on that protocol. I got to say that my heart totally goes out to anyone who put money into those uh, and really anyone who bought crypto, um, you know, before all this uh, crashed. Really, you know, take care of yourself. You know, don't, don't do anything rash. Uh, at the end of the day, it's, again, it's just money. And money's important, but it's not everything. Uh, so definitely take care of yourself. Take a break if you need it for sure, um, because you know these times are tough. But don't be uh, don't be too tough on yourself. All right, so let's go into main purpose of today's video. Typically, when price falls, open interest falls as well. Uh, so what I am going to be talking about today is the open interest market cap ratio. This is a percentage that tells me what percent of the market of the market cap is held by futures futures open interest. When this value is quite high, such as around here, like 8%, that means that risk is very, very high. There are many traders in leveraged positions, i.e. open interest high. Uh, that's one thing you do have to see. And when this is very low, such as like 2% on, uh, on this asset, that means that risk is pretty low. Not many traders have positions on. Okay. So typically you're gonna see more volatility, of course, when risk is high, when many futures traders have positions, when this white line's a lot higher. The indicator below it that I will show you is the aggregated predicted funding rate. This is just gonna tell us how much higher or how much lower the futures, tra uh, the futures asset is trading relative to spot. So when it's quite negative, quite red, that means that the futures uh, rate is far below the spot rate meaning that futures traders are favoring shorts and leaving longs and believe that the market will just go lower. Okay, now let's go do some analysis of, of really how this works. Uh, so a few things to, to take a look at. One thing that I found very interesting was this point right here. Uh, right before the large pump of about what was like 300%, which is insane because these assets, uh, especially anchor protocol is just so volatile. You can see that risk was really, really low. That means that at this point in time, just not many futures traders uh, really had positions on. And then what we see is the aggregated predicting rate is, predicted rate is incredibly negative, um, minus 2%. So this means that the spot rate is far above the futures rate because so many people were shorting. So what we basically have here is not many traders uh, you know, in and a lot of traders who are short and naturally, uh, you know, um, things got pretty bad for them, but this would have been a phenomenal time to buy with the aggregated predicting rate, predicted rate being that, um, that negative. Then what we can see is probably the clear, cleanest point that I've seen. Um, basically what happens is so many traders have positions here. Uh, it was 8% actually. 8% of the entire market cap um, was in the open interest of this one um, deriv derivative. What we can also see is that the aggregated predicting, predicted funding rate was rising, meaning that people were beginning to become uh, bullish and, and long. And this would have been a phenomenal time to bet against the crowd, obviously. This would have been a great short that would have offered a great ROI. Um, how do we know that? Well, risk is really high. And risk is high because a lot of people are entering into long positions, right? And when a lot of people are entering into long positions and risk is so high, there's so many traders who are long, um, that's the sign that they're all about to get slaughtered. And, and that's exactly what happened right here. Um, other times that risk became, you know, quite, quite high uh, was right here as well. You know, this kind of had the same little, the same kind of pattern. Not many traders have positions on around here, just no one really knows what to do. Uh, aggregated predicted is quite negative, and then, you know, price goes up, a lot of people start to buy. You can see it right here because the uh, open interest ratio rises so much. A lot of positions are being put on and people are beginning to buy, as you can see from this 
getting uh, higher. This getting higher means that the futures asset is trading a little bit closer to the spot rate. And then what I see here is whenever, uh, I mean, not whenever, but when I see something like this, this is telling me that this looks more bearish than bullish, I would say. Uh, the reason this strikes me as a little bit more bearish is because a lot of traders are now betting that this market you know, is likely going to rise because the futures assets trading a little bit closer to the spot rate and you know, the people are buying it up, even though risk is really high. So I do think that this tanking again is probably on the cards. All right, now let's talk about something even more volatile, um, which is the asset that unfortunately has hurt a lot of people recently, um, but it also leaves us a very good lesson on, um, on risk. So another thing that I can see here is we saw a skyrocketing amount of risk right here. Basically, open interest went, the open interest ratio went from half percent to a high of about 3.65%. So tons of traders were taking on positions here. You can also see that in the volume here. Now you may say, well, okay, Bennett, I, I can see that risk is really high. A lot of people are in positions. What, what do we know? Well, what you can see right here, even though it's kind of faint, is that the predicted negative, the predicted funding rate was very, very low. It tanked down, meaning that a lot of futures traders were shorting. Uh, so unfortunately for these guys, a lot of shorting happened right here. Would have been the absolute best time to have entered into a good long position. Uh, risk is incredibly high. People are piling into shorts. It's way too crowded. Uh, you know, that would have been a phenomenal trade of a few hundred percent pretty, pretty easily, or more than a few hundred percent, actually. Or, yeah, around that. Um, you, you know, you can see that right there. There are a lot of other ways you can interpret this besides just looking for when risk is high, what is the predicted funding rate doing? Um, we can also kind of see some really good opportunities when risk was really low, when not many traders have positions on. I've noticed that, you know, typically that means that the market's just not doing much, kind of just consolidating, kind of just consolidating here. And a lot of times when the market's not really doing much, that leads to a, a you know, a time where the market's going to be doing a lot, i.e. like high volatility. So when risk is low, that offers you a chance, I guess, to enter a position before everyone else in entering in a period of low volatility. And what I've noticed is when risk gets pretty low, typically price rises, but I, you know, I don't know how good I would feel about that. Um, but yeah, that's just one thing to, to keep an eye on. The, but the best way for me to typically do this is to just look for what are futures trading bet what are futures trade traders betting? How can I bet against them? Um, because they're probably going to be wrong and probably going to be too crowded into longs or too crowded into shorts. And then what is risk? You know, is risk really low or is risk you know like really high? And if risk is really low here, then I'm probably going to just wait until risk gets a little bit higher, something like here, uh, until I enter my um, you know my position. All right, let's talk about the king of all assets, uh, Bitcoin. I've added another indicator here, which is the overall long short accounts uh, percent. This is showing us of every account on Binance, um, on, on Binance BTC USD Perpetual, what percent of them, or, or the ratio of longs to shorts. So how many accounts are long versus how many accounts are short. So let's go take a look at some, some risk metrics here. Uh, this is on the one hour. I can actually zoom this in on the five minute and it will probably give us many better readings. Uh, as is typical, when the price dumps or has a lot of volatility, a lot of people rush into positions. Um, this was a pretty golden opportunity right here. Uh, and, and, and this one too as well. This one was even better, of course. What we saw here was risk was really high. 2% of the entire Bitcoin market cap was in the open interest of one derivative asset. Uh, and what we see here is just complete collapse of, you know, very, very negative funding rate. Many traders at this point right here believe that the market was going to go lower. Uh, not only that with the funding rate, but also many, many traders were actually hopping into short positions and exiting longs. And then finally, a lot of people were in positions because risk was very, very high. The ratio here was about 2%. Uh, and this would have been the absolute best time to buy. When Absolutely everyone was into shorts. Absolutely everyone at this point in time was talking about how the market, you know, could not go higher than 28K, could not go higher than 29K. Uh, and then, of course, the market went up to 31 because that's what markets do. 
they like to trend contrary of people's expectations, especially when those expectations get quite extreme, you know, i.e. everyone's either long or everyone's are either short. Uh, and this would have just been a great opportunity for that. But so far, I think I've noticed that this works best on Anchor Protocol um, perp. But I will say these two assets are incredibly volatile. Uh, def definitely exercise extreme caution with this because you can just see here how extreme these changes in risk are. Um, not just w with the ratio here, but just the percent change is insane. Like 300% here and then we're down, you know, 70% and this is on a one minute chart. So definitely got to be beyond safe and not using a stop loss w would be complete suicide here. It, it would be insane. You you don't really have a choice. You know that's something you kind of have to do. Um, but I have noticed that a lot of local tops on ANC USD coincide with a large rise in um, in risk. You know this one right here, this one right here. Even though this one, eh, I don't know how I feel about. But yeah, people were hopping to longs though, so probably a good time to short there. Uh, and then risk when risk was really really low here. Yeah, it was typically like a better time to. Um, to enter into a long. So essentially what I've really learned from this from looking at the open interest ratio percent as a gauge for risk is on these assets, especially these two, many traders uh, get very, 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 they don't take a lot of risk when the market's just at a lower point and just flat, but then they take a ton of risk when the market spikes. When these markets spike a few hundred percent, people are just jumping into, into risk. Um, as you can see here, because the market cap is increasing, but the open interest is increasing so much more because so many futures traders are betting on the market rising and buying tops. And every time they buy these tops and risk is just so high, the saddest thing is this drop in open interest by market cap ratio is probably them getting slaughtered um, because it's dropping at such a rate that any leverage trader is getting destroyed. So when this drops like that, that's just, you know, obviously with this rising, that's probably a lot of long traders getting slaughtered, uh, as you can see. All right, so that's going to do it for this video. I highly recommend that you do this kind of setup, looking at the aggregated predicted and the open interest percent um, market cap ratio, just to gauge risk and to see when traders are taking risk and when traders are not taking risk, because it can lead to some pretty good trading opportunities, especially for volatile assets. Of course, with these two, you really got to exercise extreme risk, even with uh, extreme risk management. Even with Bitcoin lately, uh, you know, you got to be very, very careful. Uh, and do know that, of course, these aren't always going to work because everything in the market is a probability. And if something gives you a better probability of success, you should probably take it. But do, of course, know that nothing at all is 0% or 100%. You know, nothing works every time or never works. So definitely something to look at with, with looking when uh, markets are risk on or risk off. And with that, happy trading. Keep analyzing.